I noticed that in my shape design for composition video, quite a few of you asked me for my brushes or how I created them. Well, you asked, so I'm going to be delivering on this video and much more. I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my top favorite tips, tricks, and hacks that I use in Photoshop in order to increase my efficiency and productivity as well. So I hope you guys find something useful out of it. And if there's one that you didn't know about, I want you guys to leave a comment in the video letting me know which one. In my shape design for a composition video, I showed two brushes that I use. Let's call them brush A and brush B. Brush A gives you slight variations in colors as you paint each stroke. And brush B scatters shapes with slight color variations. I'm going to be showing you guys how I create similar brushes from scratch. First, let's start off with a simple default brush that everyone should have, and that's the hard round brush. So to activate color dynamics, you go to Window tab on the top bar and look for brush settings. Look for the color dynamics tab and let's tick the box. For the sake of the demo, let's reset all the values to zero and untick the apply per tip box at the top. The main sliders that you'll be working with are the hue, saturation, and brightness jitter. Essentially, how it works is that the farther you push the slider, it increases the range that a random value will be chosen from. So if you shift the slider just a bit, it will only cause slight variations. At maximum value, you'll essentially have the whole spectrum or range that the random value can be chosen from. You'll also notice that these are the same properties that make up color. But just in case you guys are curious, here are my settings for brush A. As you can see, it's quite subtle as I don't want too much contrast. However, to create something that's more similar to brush B where the shapes scatter randomly, so all you have to do is tick the apply per tip box. You'll see that the colors come out like a colorful caterpillar. And you'll also notice that it's quite dense right now, so we're going to adjust the space setting. Go to the brush tip shape tab and adjust the slider. The further you adjust the slider, the more spacing you will get in between each shape to the point that you'll get gaps in between them. In order to introduce some random scattering, just go into the scattering tab and you will notice that when you push the slider, the further out the scattering goes. To increase the density of the shapes that come out, play around with the count slider here. If you want to have variations in the angles as well when it scatters, all you have to do is go into the brush tip shape and adjust the slider for the angle jitter. You can also turn on the size jitter as well if you want to add pen pressure to it so that whenever you press harder, the shape is going to get bigger and when you press lighter, it's going to become smaller. And lastly, if you want to add opacity jitter, all that you have to go to is transfer and in the drop down list next to control, just choose pen pressure. One handy trick is that you can change your brush shape, but keep whatever settings that you have by going to brush tip shape and choosing another brush from the thumbnails. So hopefully you guys are much more familiar now with the different properties that can make up a brush. So play around with those and you might even surprise yourself by coming up with a completely unique and custom brush for yourself that best suits your own workflow and needs as well. And of course, if you are curious about my own brush settings for the scatter brush, here it is on the screen as well. When you think of the smudge tool, you might think about using it to blend. For example, by using a chalk brush with scattering, you can manipulate the edges into more interesting shapes. You can also play around with the strength setting in order to get different results. However, there's one key option that you should get familiar with, and that's the sample all layers. Without it, the way smudging works is that it uses the contents of the current layer you have selected and manipulates that. However, when you tick sample all layers, it treats the whole canvas as one layer. So it can be very helpful in order to make big and quick changes, but it does make your PC lag a lot, especially with brushes with many settings. So just be careful 
to turn the setting off when you don't need it as you might pick up unnecessary colors as well. One of my favorite uses for the smudge tool is in order to sketch and design. As you can see, you can easily pull and push shapes and make big changes to the proportion. I know it's a little bit of a rough and dirty way to make changes, but sometimes that's what you need in order to not be so precious with your sketches and actually make meaningful changes. If you separate your materials onto different layers, it can make it a whole lot easier as well to make changes without accidentally smudging unnecessary elements. Smudging does work best when you have a texture that is simple or at least parallel to the direction of your smudge. But it can still be a nice way to create a base to paint over. One of my favorite tools in Photoshop is the mixer brush. And you can think of it as a color picker on steroids. When you use a normal color picker, you will just pick one flat color. But what if you could pick a patch of colors and load it onto your brush? To access the mixer brush, select it from the drop down menu here or cycle through it using Shift B. For the purposes of this tutorial, let's open up this menu at the top bar and select dry and heavy load. Similar to the color picker, use the Alt key to make a selection. The selection will depend on your brush size and you can see a preview of what you select in this little window up here. Do note that the selection will only be taken from the layer you're on. However, that can be changed by taking the sample all layers as well. But as always, be sure to turn it off when you're not using it. You can then use the loaded information on the brush to stamp the selection or paint with it. Similar to the smudge tool, the results might be a little bit rough, but it will save you a lot of time by giving you much more information to paint over than just flat colors. And you can also try painting in different directions as it can give you different results. I personally love using the mixer brush to create tedious details really quickly such as trims, studs, or even scratches. You can also apply scattering onto the mixer brush to get results like this. It's also a great way to populate scenes really quickly as well. I like using it to stamp details around, changing my brush size in order to achieve a nice large, medium, and small arrangement. You want to turn a tree into a forest? No problem. Just apply the scatter settings that we covered earlier with your mixer brush. And the last of the three horsemen of powerful Photoshop tools is the stamp tool. Stamping is a great way to repeat or duplicate details with a bit more precision. You can find the stamp tool here on the side menu or you can access it using hotkey S. So after you've selected your stamp tool, go to your layer where the content you want to duplicate is. You'll start off by holding Alt in order to select a starting point. And you'll see that when you start painting, it will start from the point you selected earlier and you can gradually reveal more of the contents of the layer by continuing to drag the brush stroke out and painting it. However, this has to be done in a continuous stroke. Otherwise, it will restart from the starting point. However, when you resample to a different area, you'll notice that the starting point also changes as well. One thing to note is that if at any point you have updated the content of the layer you sampled from, it will automatically load itself into your selection. So the stamp tool is a great way to duplicate objects quickly to create a pattern or a way to make precise selections and stamp details. Another nifty thing you can do is open up a menu called Clone Source. The main thing you really need to know here are these boxes. Basically, changing the values changes the scale of your selection, so you can make it larger or smaller. So here's how I personally like to use it. So first of all, 
to make a selection, lower the value, and paint again on the same layer. Just that it creates this like cascading effect where the size gradually decreases, which allows me to get a pleasing arrangement of large, medium, and small. Well, how was that? Did you guys manage to find something interesting or something you didn't know about? Well, be sure to let me know. Or if there is another favorite trick of yours and hack that I don't know about that's not in this video, do share it in the comment sections. I'm sure some other people will find it helpful and useful as well. And if you also have any suggestions for topics that you want me to share some of my favorite tips, tricks, and advice on, do let me know in the comments. And as always guys, take care and stay stretchy.